All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So, welcome to the REO Show. I'm your host, I'm Ben Fredericks. And uh, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, really excited to have you. If it's not, uh, you know, please share the love. And even if you are new, share the love. Like, share, comment on the stream. It would mean a lot to us. Panama City Beach, originally from Daytona. Right on, girl. So um, today I'm going to share with you some stuff that I learned uh, at the 10X Growth Conference with Greg Cardone. And I shared this in a group that I'm in already, but, uh, you know, some of my key takeaways were the first thing that really stuck out. I walked into that building and it hit me. I've been thinking too small. I have been thinking too small. So look at a guy like Grant Cardone two years ago. The growth conference had like 500, maybe 1,000 people. This year was 30,000 plus. So that is a guy that thinks really, really big. And uh, that really excited me. You know, the, the potential that we all have is really unlimited. And the things that we can do are amazing if we really commit to it. So, and, and put it down that we're gonna make it happen. So I commend Grant, his entire team, uh, just a, an amazing event. I really enjoyed it. I think uh, there was uh, a lot of commentary you know, on podcasts and different things where Grant was kind of getting a hard time about, oh, it's a pitch fest, you're gonna be sold a lot of things. But if you go into these things and you expect to be sold, you don't have to buy anything, all right? But there were, uh, trust me when I say there was a tremendous amount of value delivered uh, from John Maxwell, Steve Harvey, uh, Sarah Blakely, Jesse Itzler. I mean, it was just tremendous value that these people were giving and really just they were committed to delivering a great experience, which, which was fantastic. So just to give you a little bit of background, I discovered Grant about four years ago. I was working in financial services at the time and was really kind of, I'll tell you, I know exactly where I was when it happened because it was like a switch went off. I was in the Las Vegas airport and I was coming back from a conference from when I worked at Allstate. And I just happened to come across, I think it was a Facebook video. And here's this guy getting out of a Rolls Royce and going to jump onto his plane. And he wasn't bragging. He wasn't saying, oh, look at me. I'm a big baller. I got all this stuff. I got this. I got that. He was saying, I want you here with me. There's no reason you should not be here with me on this plane or have one of your own. And I realized at that time, he's absolutely right. There is no reason I can't get one of those if I really, if I really want that. There's no reason I can't afford a Rolls Royce if I really want that. So shortly thereafter, when I got back from that trip, I began to plan my exit. So this has taken four years for me to get from there to here from a guy that owns a couple of properties to a guy that was part of buying over 240 deals last year. And I got to thank Grant Cardone for that. Nobody else. I mean, that was the first guy I discovered in personal development that really showed me what was possible. Okay. So, so here's some of the key takeaways that I took away and I'm going to share a couple of bits uh, of additional information on these so that you can understand. Uh, sort of my perspective. So Grant talked heavily about everyone is in sales. No matter what you do, if you hate sales, doesn't matter. You're in it. Okay. You sell everything. You sell yourself. You want to go date that girl? You better sell yourself. You want that job? You better sell yourself in the interview, right? So anything you want is a sale and everything you get in return is a commission. There were, there were years where I hated sales. I didn't embrace it. I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I thought, you know, this is I'm pressuring people, all this stuff. And then that, that, that was a real aha moment for me. Everything is sale and everything you get in return is a commission. Now that could be an amazing commission. It could be a nothing commission. Your, your commission for doing nothing is nothing. Your commission for doing all the work and, and the massive amount of action 
is a much higher commission than somebody that doesn't put in that kind of work. All right. So every everyone, all of you, anyone watching this, whether it's now or later on down the road on YouTube, you are in sales. So you get better embrace it. All right. Become masterful at it. That should be your ultimate goal is saying, OK, how can I become the best? How can I get to another level uh, in sales? All right. Second piece, money is a tool, right? So there's a lot of people have a stigma about money. In my house growing up, you didn't talk about money. You didn't ask because it was not polite, okay? So it, it, money is a tool. It should be talked about. And money is only code for freedom. That was never brought up to me as a kid. I didn't, the idea of freedom, I didn't even know what that meant. You know, I, okay, I live in America, I'm free. Not really. You're you're a slave until you are free. You're a slave to somebody else until you've you've gone to to do something for yourself that creates your own freedom. All right. And the only way to do that, the only way to do that is through money. All right. So that's another thing to really embrace. Second part with that was you create your own luck by putting yourself in a position to have luck find you. Have you ever looked at somebody and said, My God. That person is so lucky. Look at all the things that they have. Look at the life they lead. It's not luck. Unless they won the, the, the sperm lottery and, you know, they were born to the king of England. It's not, that's luck, right? But somebody, if you look at somebody that has worked very, very hard for what they have in their life, it isn't luck. It's because they put themselves in a position to get luck, all right? The harder you work, the luckier you get. You've all heard that probably seen it in 5,000 memes. It's totally true. All right. The next thing was purpose, your purpose, finding your purpose. I, I took, I spent 36 years looking for my purpose. Didn't know what it was, not a clue. And what he talked about finding your purpose is love to do what you do, be good at it. And it does good for the world. I finally feel like I have that in my own life. So hopefully you find that in yours as well. I love doing what I do. I love buying properties. I love looking at the deals. I love selling the deals. You know, um, I happen to be pretty good at it. And it does good for people. Like we're helping people become homeowners. We're helping investors level up their game and increase their cash flow. I'm helping my investors, people that back me. I'm helping them build their wealth. So I'm doing some good for the world. It makes me feel good. I love what I do and I'm good at it. So if you can find those things inside of your own life, that's, that's a great thing. I posted this on Instagram this morning. Pressure is a privilege. It's a privilege. If you ever thought about you do your best work when you're under pressure, I've always been that way. I don't know why I'm the worst procrastinator, especially when I was in school, I would procrastinate so much when it would come to getting homework done or whatever. But I thrived on that pressure. Still today, I do that. So in sales, you always perform the best when you're on a deadline. At least I did. So some people are, you know, type A personalities where they got to get it done now. And I'm the type that usually will kick the can down the road. But if I put myself in a position to always have pressure, that could be key. That could make a difference because then I'm constantly working as hard as I should be throughout the time. So how do you do that? You've got to set massive goals so that your problems pale in comparison to your goals. And so you're constantly evaluating those saying, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it quick enough. So Ed Milet talks about how he breaks his day up into three, six hour days. And now he's getting three days in one. So I would encourage you to go listen to that episode. Uh, I think it just came out like a week or two ago on Ed Milet's Max Out podcast. It's awesome. It's really helped me reevaluate how I'm spending my time throughout a day. So I'm somebody that gets up very early. I get up at five o'clock and then I'm, you know, getting in some personal development time, starting my day off on a great note. And so from five until basically about noon, I can count that as one day. I can get a whole lot done in that amount of time. In fact, I get a lot done from five until about 7.30 in the morning when my daughter wakes up, all right? So 
I, I use that. I use that pressure of that two and a half hours to really get three, four things done before the day even starts. And that really helps me, you know, start the day with some momentum. So Ed Milet podcast on time, expanding time. Go check that out. I promise you it's worth it. Uh, Jesse Itzler, he talked about the 40% rule, which is a David Goggins uh, sort of mindset. So if you don't know David Goggins, he's a former Navy SEAL and just all around straight up badass. This is a guy who runs ultra marathons, 100 miles at a time. He went through buds and the SEALs through, not once, not twice, but three times. Okay, I think he's the only person to have ever done that. So, and he made it, he went through three hell weeks. So if you don't know what hell week is, look that up and you will have instant found respect. I'd also encourage you to read his book, Can't Break Me. It's amazing. All right. But anyway, this guy, Jesse Itzler, who uh, started a jet company that sold to Warren Buffett. He's now part owner of the Atlanta Hawks. He uh, created this coconut water that was sold to Coca-Cola for hundreds of millions of dollars. He's married to the lady from Spanx, who's a billionaire. So... He's got some influence, right? So he shows up at this ultra marathon race. So he's going to run this for charity. And he meets this David Goggins, sees what he goes through in this race. You have to read the book. I'm not going to get into it here. It's a really long story, but it's awesome. And he says, I got to meet this guy. Who is this guy that is 250 pounds running 100 miles and just making it happen? I, I, I got to know this guy. So long story short, he invites David Goggins to come live with him in his home. And the first thing David Goggins does is says, I want to find out who you are. Let's go down to your gym and we're going to do 100 pull-ups. Jesse Isler says, I can't. 100 pull-ups? I probably can't even do 10. He's like, let's find out. So he goes down. He knocks out like six pull-ups. He's huffing and puffing, breathing. He's very stressed. He says, okay, rest a minute, do some more. Does that four times until he gets down to one. He says, I, I, I'm spent. he done like a total of 14. I'm spent. I can't do anymore. And David Goggins says automatically, I know exactly what your problem is. You put limits on yourself that you can't even get done. So we're going to sit here and we're going to do these pull-ups until you knock out 100. And he finally he did. And he told him about the 40% rule, which is your brain will quit when you've reached a level of 40% of what you could actually perform. All right. It's in our DNA. It's our fight or flight. It's our safety mechanism inside of our own mind so that we don't cause ourselves any pain. So that was a huge takeaway. I love that. We're only operating at a 40% of probably what we could. Grant Cardone was showing you what is possible above 40%. All right. He committed. He really made that happen. All right. Um, growth comes from the unknown. This is another thing that Jesse Isler talked about. Uh, kids face the unknown every single day, right? And they continue to grow. They continue to learn. They continue to, to just develop and, and get better. But at some point as adults, we get stuck in routine and we don't necessarily put ourselves out there into the unknown. So if you really want to accelerate your growth, start putting yourself into position of being in the unknown. All right. I, I, I found that profound because it's absolutely right. My, I watch my daughter every single day. She is doing something new that she's never done before. She's facing a fear that she can't even understand whether it's real or not. And so I need to put myself in those positions. Otherwise, we stop growing. We don't, we don't get better, right? So there's like an instant rule that if you're scared to do something, you should take, you should take no more than 10 seconds and go and do it. If it if, let's say you saw somebody at a, a restaurant. You're like, God, I'd love to meet that person. You should go do it now. You should not think about it. You should just go do it, all right? If you're at a networking event, you're like, God, that guy over there or that woman looks like they really are smart. They look, I see them, they, they've got this amazing aura about them that they look super successful. Go talk to them, make the decision right there, go talk to them, all right? So put yourself in position 
and get comfortable getting uncomfortable, all right? Uh, you need someone that embarrasses you. I'm going to tell a story, and I, I don't know if he's on right now or not, but a friend of mine who I'll be actually interviewing on uh, February 20th, his name is Beyond Wind. A couple of weeks ago, I was here on live, and I was talking about going to growth conference and how we had a condo, and Beyond said, hey, I might come down. I was like, you should. I got an extra room. Come. Let's hang out. Well, about two days before growth conference, I didn't hear from him. Two days before growth conference, he says, hey, you still got that room? Absolutely. So he came down and came down to hang out with me. He's like, I have no intention of going to growth conference, but I'm going to go. And I was like, okay. So he's like, I came down here to meet you. And I was like, that's amazing. So spending time with him. I've seen him on Instagram. I, I followed him. You know, he's bought some deals from us and, you know, we've worked together. He's a stand up guy. Awesome. But being around him was a, a humbling experience. Okay. And I'll tell you what. Beyond, I, I was so proud of myself. I was like, yeah, man. Uh, I, you know, I read like uh, 26 books last year and uh, I'm on my fifth book this year. I was like, how many books did you read last year? He's like, I read 85 books. <laughs> I was so, I was embarrassed. Like I really thought I had done something and then he's, he's crushing me. So the point of that story and, and, and the other thing I absolutely loved about the guy is he's very insightful and, you know, generous with his information and, and just a brilliant guy, like really honestly brilliant. So I, I really enjoyed my time with him. And the point of that is get around people that are going to embarrass you a little bit because it's going to make you better. It's going to make you want to be better. And that's what I brought back from him. I was like, boy, here's another person who's crushing it. How's he going to get 80 some odd books done in a year? And I'm thinking I'm winning at 52. I could do more. So how do I find ways to do more? John Maxwell, if you don't know him, this is the first time I became aware of John Maxwell. Now, apparently John Maxwell has written somewhere close to 80 books uh, on leadership and you know business and things like that. I'd never heard of him before this conference. So uh, I took three pages of notes from John Maxwell alone. I'm not going to share them all with you. I'm going to share with you one or two things here. The first thing was everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything you are going to do, everything you are going to be is all going to be because you went uphill to get it. All right. So I'm going to put this in a little bit of context for you. How many people do you know that got married off of a one night stand? Probably none, right? I, I certainly don't. So this is a, a, a everything everything you do from your relationships to your business to your fitness, you know, to your learning is all going to be uphill. It's all going to be uphill. So embrace it. Know it. There is there is pleasure in the pain of chasing what you're after. Okay. It makes the juice worth the squeeze. All right. All right. And then the other thing that he shared was being intentional with your growth and your personal development. If you aren't spending a lot of time making yourself better every single day, you are really dropping the ball. Listen to podcasts, read daily, schedule, go to conferences, get yourself around people, network, make yourself better every single day with personal development. It is, it is a game changer. I promise you. I mean, it's done tremendous amount of uh, great things for me in my life in just the last four years. So commit to it on a daily basis. And then uh, let's see, just a couple more things. Keep your attention in front of you. Keep your attention in front of you. Okay. You ever notice that how in your, your car, your windshield is about 50 times bigger than your rear view mirror, right? The reason for that is because what's behind you, it doesn't even matter. It's gone. You can't change it. It's done. So all you can do is look forward and move forward. All right. I really like that uh, analogy. And then finally, exchange time and money for connections. That's what this was about for me. Growth Conference wasn't about, you know, yes, I love to hear Grant Cardone speak. I love his events. I know he always is going to over deliver, but that's not what it was all about. It's about putting yourself in a position to meet other people that can help you, that you could help that you can raise up together, all right? So 
connections. Trade your time and money for connections. That's why I upgraded my seat. I wanted to be around the people that are playing at a higher level than me. I felt dumb in plenty of conversations down there, which is good. That's how it should be. You should be the dumbest person in the room or you in the wrong damn room. All right. So hopefully uh, you found this helpful. If you didn't go this year, I'd highly advise you to go next year. If you want to go to a great Grant, uh, Grant Cardone event, it's the Business and Marketing Boot Camp. Outstanding. That's an outstanding event. He's having one in March and in June. I don't get paid to promote his stuff. I'm just telling you, it's good. I've been to it. If you want a series about growing your business, you want to learn some uh, very specific strategies that you can use, it is worth going to and, and checking out. All right. So find us on YouTube. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram. Odell Barnes, R-E-O, is the way you can find us all. Also, if you are interested in investing in notes or building your passive income, find our Facebook group, which is called Building Wealth with Owner Financing. Love to have you in there. Uh, we had my buddy Dan Zatoski was dropping some gold in there this morning uh, that you guys could really use. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, very successful uh, people in that group that just share a wealth of information that you it would take you years to accumulate. And now you can get it inside of one little group. It's absolutely free. So there's no reason you shouldn't join. All right. So that's building wealth with owner financing. And again, find us on all our social media. I appreciate all the likes. Uh, please uh, share this. Uh, help us build a bigger audience. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, if we can help you buy property, visit our website, odellbarnesreo.com. And we would love to help you buy some more deals this year that you can add to your portfolio and, you know, increase your passive income because cash flow is king. That's what it's all about. I'm chasing, chasing my number. I'm running it down. So one thing I brought back from this conference, I didn't set my goals big enough. They got re-raised. I had to come back and tell my partner, we got more work to do. All right. So thanks again for joining. I appreciate you. We love you. Let's buy some deals, all right? And let's learn together. Let's grow together. Let's let's really rise up, you know, and, and take this, this investing to the next level all as a group, as a tribe. I want to see everybody win. So if you're invested with us, thank you. If you want to be invested with us and you don't know how, send me a DM. I'd love to talk with you. Uh, we offer owner financing on any deal you see on our website. So there's absolutely no reason you can't be in the game. So. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.